Si, we got to get you a cell phone. For what? For why? I, it won't work. I got three at the house. Well, the biggest thing they got on them is an alarm clock so that you don't sleep till 1030. Well, no, I, I can knock that thing off. <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's yeah. the thing about a cell phone's alarm. You got an hey, old school? This, hey, look here. This old man's going to get his beauty rest. Do you have an alarm clock? Uh, yeah, I got an alarm clock. Hey, How, did we tell that story here? About Philip coming out. I oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you thought it was your security yeah, system, but it was your alarm. System, I done beat that security system <laughs> code in there for 10, 50 times. And, and Philip was... kept saying, hey, put this code in. I said, I've already put that in. Well, I, next time I know he was squalling tires. He comes sliding sideways. And it's your alarm clock. <laughs> it's alarm clock. Next thing I do, he said, that sounds like it's coming from the bedroom. Next thing I hear, that alarm clock shattered against the wall. <laughs> he just uh, yanked it out, and I mean, it to pieces. Uh, and then next thing I hear, squalling again. I ain't talked to the boy in three weeks after that. Every time I'd call over, I'd say, Alicia, he's going to talk to me today. I, I need to find She said, I don't know if he'll talk to you or not. He done got mad. Yeah, he's still, <laughs> he's still uh, mad. He done got big mad. Said, well, hey. You know, get over it. Uh, yeah. so the reason we're talking about this is uh, we we had had the podcast at 10 o'clock this morning. And, and someone here wasn't Yeah, we all got here and Cy wasn't here. Uh, yeah. Well, what it shows you, there were two of us here. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't here either. I had well, no idea. We have and that's the two that actually right. work at this place for a paycheck. Yeah. Well, I was fixing that. <laughs> the other two. Some boy had a long <laughs> We were out and about. <laughs> Hey, That's all I got to say. Hey, is I'll use a movie line. Uh, we have a failure to communicate going right. on here. That's right. Well, I, I started a little, a little uh, chain text that ho hopefully will fix the issue of communication. I doubt. We'll it. see. I, I doubt, doubt it. it. I well, doubt ain't nothing gonna fix communication if a man sleeps till ten o'clock in the morning. Well, that government well, hey, man look, winkle. That's over true. There. How do you think I, mean, I get this pretty? I get plenty of beauty rest. That's why well, you ought to be prettier than that. Well, hey, well, hey, well, hey, well, hey because I ain't trying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, because I'm definitely getting my rest. Oh, I get, you are fired up today. Uh, I love oh, it. No, no, look, I'm telling you, we had a retreat at the church, and the guys involved in it done a fantastic job. Well, one of the guys involved with it sitting right beside you, well, he don't look, look as fired up as you. Well, well there's look, a there's oh, the thing about well, Jesus. They did their job. Sometimes okay. he doesn't let you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes there's hey, bigger things than sleep, this, brother. Ugh. Okay, in your weakness, hey, it's made perfect. Oh my goodness that's gracious! Strong, you did pay, look here. I've that's funny. He said that because I already got the Bible verse today pulled up, and it is that one. Uh, there you go. Um, oh, and I, it's, hey, I'm telling you, the older you get, okay, you finally start getting a little bit of sense. Okay, because you ain't got no when you're young. No. Oh, preach it. Oh, yeah. I'm serious. Oh, I, okay. I, I, I'm so, agreeing with so you wholeheartedly. Every <laughs> time I go somewhere here lately, uh, mm -hmm. someone or something has a, a fabulous message to give. And, hey, Sunday was one. Mm. Okay, because I've, I've never been good, <clears throat> you know, because I've, I've always, I'm my own worst enemies, okay, because I always look. You know, I, I make comparisons, you know. Man, I wish, I wish I was like that guy over there. You know, he's always just on point and, you know, got it together and all that, you know. You know but I find out, hey, there is strength in weakness. Preach. Oh. You know what I'm saying? One and of the, the reason, you know, Brian's one, that, he was one that done the lesson, most of it. Yeah, for those that don't know, Rucker preached it. Side WFR uh, yesterday. Rucker is the guy. If you watch Doug Dynasty, he was once running the snow cone stand outside, and now he's Big just dude. bringing uh, yeah. the hellfire oh, no. and brimstone oh, sermons oh, from no. the pulpit, oh, baby. Yeah. No, he brought it. I'm telling you, okay. And you would never think because he's so uh, the word that comes to mind, and he's shy and real quiet. Okay, well, Wait, now we're I'm talking I'm about I'm different I'm human beings. I'm 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 out. Out. Are we, the I'm the out. last out. thing he Rucker? was. Yeah, yeah, the last thing he was yesterday, okay, was quiet and shy. He ain't been that since I've known him. Well, hey, look, 
The, and, when I was around the guy, maybe he, he gets nervous he around you. Yeah, words, he probably just you know? scared of you. Because knowing his past oh. occupations, you couldn't be quiet and shy and not to do right. what he did. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd tell you. Look, well, Brian I'm Rucker. Saying, hey, he brought it. He brought it. Yes. For the people that don't know Rucker, we told you he's in the show. You see all this stuff if you're watching on YouTube on our tables. Yeah, that's his. Fault. This is Brian Rucker, because he let one person sign the table. Mm. And then he just started carrying Sharpies with him. And like, hey, y'all want to yeah. sign the table? Yeah, and everybody that comes through for the tour. Yeah. What? He came in my office sign and said, the table, baby. I got the best thing yeah. ever going. Everybody's just signing the table. I was like, you know, they, we film in there, right? Yeah. And I came in here just signatures everywhere. Well, oh. no, but back to weakness and strength. Back to the important okay. part. You would never Agreed. think about, okay, you've got this problem that you're trying to deal with yourself. You're trying to handle it, Okay. And you won't come down to Jesus and let Jesus take care of it for you. Mm -hmm. Well, I never thought about, hey, going down front is actually showing your strength. Oh, and I've, then confessing, hey, look, I got a problem. So I, I agree. need help. Yeah. Crying out loud. I agree. One of the greatest you know, strengths you can have is, is knowing surrender. your weaknesses. Yeah, and Ooh. surrender. And surrender. Yeah. But that that's a hard, <clears throat> I yeah. mean... No, you're, that's why you, the whole lesson was awesome. Yeah. But you gr you grow up and you're taught as men especially. Well, yeah. Don't but don't show no weakness. Don't show no weakness. Yeah. Oh, you can't cry. Yeah. What do you mean I can't cry? Yeah, I can. I can cry like a little baby. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the Robertson <laughs> you know? Code. Oh, who's the uh, man? No, I never was. Never was <laughs> all that who's the man? Hey, leave me out. I'm a child. <laughs> I'm a boy. He's a boy. Treat me as such. <laughs> One of these days I'm gonna grow up, hopefully. Well, I doubt it. Uh, and uh, never accept blame. Hey, yeah, for anything. Yeah. Oh, hey, you gotta figure out who's that father here. Forgive me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, hey, and the best part is, hey, go in there and look in the mirror and say, yeah, yeah, you the one that turned the darn dogs loose. National pastime. Transfer the blame. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's so, no. so we built a big dump across the cutoff. I say we. <laughs> Uh, Phil, I still can't believe that it blowed out. Phil and and Jimmy Red, yeah, uh, were the architects Ooh. of mm. said dump. Well, there's well, one thing I can assure you: it wasn't square. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> it wasn't plumb. That's for sure. Uh, so the first big flash flood come along. Well, Just, I, hey, it wasn't that big. big flash what? flood, three what? inch, three inch, three inch rain. rain, blew half of it down the yeah. creek. Yeah. And look, yeah. this is this is clay, okay, packed uh, and drove over with a track hole numerous times, okay. And clay is hard when it dries out. Well, it, 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 it dried out. Well, I, I I'm not a I'm not an expert in such things by any means, but I would think you would need something other than just gumbo. Yeah. To help. And you know we had one pipe. I mean it was a pretty big, uh, pretty big dump. That thing's forty, forty feet wide, and about eighty feet long. And it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. So nothing but the just pipe. from a three inch rain. Yeah. See that's why when people said, "Oh, I can't believe this flood," well, hey, why do you think there's uh, fossils on top of mountains in rock? That means there was a big water at one time. <laughs> so, so now there's uh, uh, feels. Looking around, trying to assess blame on that deal. Oh, hey, by the know. way, I got a <laughs> card that's got a phone number on it, and they deal in pipes. Okay. Y'all hadn't found it. Oh, we need a pipe. We need about a well, 40. I got, I, well, we I need, need two pipe, 40-foot, about 48-inch okay. pipe. Well, I've got a phone number on a card. That's what they do for okay. a living, so, make pipes. <laughs> so it turns out one pipe wasn't enough. So we need about three pipes. Yeah. And I don't know if that's going to be enough if it decides to rain more than three. It has some rock. So it sounds orders. like that an engineer was finally consulted on well, this, right. and the math was done. Yeah, they finally got well, a guy hey, over the there. beavers, given time, yeah. the beavers will help us because they will jam sticks and rocks and everything else in there and beat it in there with their tail. But <laughs> not on the first one. Uh, not, not on, on the first one. one. They didn't help us. Yeah. Uh, but going back to this morning, so I call size house, like, Five times you were there. Uh huh. I called his house five times. Phone rang. No answer. No answer. I called Chris Christine's cell phone. No answer. No answer. So I called my wife I, and uh, I said, "Look, you guys uh, are getting the car." I said, "You, you going to go <laughs> wake up Uncle Si?" And uh, she goes over to his house 
and waked him up. You were just out asleep for the still. And she said, she said, well, I went, I knocked on the door, and Christine come up in a in her nightgown. She said they was all still asleep. And uh, good for you, old man. There you go. Hey, man. Look, what else have I got to do? <laughs> Y'all, this hey, podcast. Y'all, I ain't got up yet. Watch TV. Okay. Uh, uh, what time does Live from Daryl's House come on? About nine o'clock. <laughs> I've been missing it. Lately. You missed it. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness uh, gracious! Uh, well, hey, I'm well, glad you could join us. Yeah, and I kind of got. I'm, I'm a little. Uh, I need a break from Dylan. Well, good. <laughs> Speaking of breaks, let's take our first one. We'll be back right after this. Oh, Matt Dylan. <laughs> Album? Yes, sir. You like spending a lot of time in a hammock, don't you? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> oh, I know what to say. What you going to say? Talk, he's talking about Tommy John underwear, That's son. what he's talking about. They're great. Uh, look, that's the reason, hey, we don't have fans. What do we have? Hey, we have fanatics, Jack, oh. because they're so we comfortable. Love them. There we go. Best underwear ever. That's oh, it. That man. is the comfortest thing that you will ever have against your body. He's uh, not uncomfortable at all. Bar none. I love it. This It, it just makes me so happy because, <laughs> Woo. look, spring has sprung, but look, just because it is, it doesn't mean you have to spend your time hunting for eggs. The right pair of underwear puts your all <laughs> puts all your eggs in one basket and keeps them there, boys. <laughs> That's it, boys. That's Tommy John's hammock pouch underwear. But when you're wearing Tommy John's hammock pouch underwear, you're that much more comfortable, so you can do everything better. With dozens of comfort innovations, once you've tried Tommy John underwear, you're never going to go back. Innovations like an air mesh interior hammock, that Goblin was describing. A moisture-wicking fabric with four times the stretch of competing brands. Plus, your legs never ride up, and that waistband don't never, roll over. They sure do over. They never don't folds. do that. And that's why they don't have fans. They have fanatics. Fanatics that call Tommy John's hammock pouch one of life's greatest inventions. With yeah, over, baby. With over 17 million pairs sold, and 20 of those being the side, men across America love their Tommy John underwear. <laughs> Shipping and returns are free. Because every pair is backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free guarantee. It's Tommy John's anniversary month, so whether you're trying them for the first time or a longtime fan, fanatic, get 25% off site-wide right now at TommyJohn.com slash duck. Go to TommyJohn.com slash duck today for 25% off. So I do have a question for you, something I considered this weekend. While I was while I was fishing, you know, growing up before you get a boat, all you can do is fish down the bank, right? It's all you can do. Yes, sir. Well, then you get a boat, and what's the first thing you do? You go fish the bank. You standing <laughs> on the bank, you yeah. want fish out there. Yeah, and then you, you get, get a way to get out get there. The boat and throw against the bank, and then you turn go to the bank. Yeah. What's that about? <laughs> Why? What? Man. What are we as humans? I, I don't get it. Well, we ain't too bright to begin with. <laughs> Sorry, we had a little wire malfunction, folks. And Technical there's a, difficulties. There's a weird cut in there. It only took a hundred and something episodes for a, for a mic wire to go out. So we're like at one twenty. I think we're doing good. Jace caught a bunch of crappie on a yep. jig pole. Yep, yep. yep. And, and Phil, he, he's got a license to set nets out for catfish. Mm -hmm. He caught a couple of big, nice hops, weigh about five, six pound piece. Hoop nets. He laid them up, fried them yeah. up. So, yeah. They you did have a feed. Oh, I heard the story. I heard was Jace uh, bought a bunch of shiners and caught Willie's fish out, oh, of, yeah. out of his pond. Yeah, yeah. Willie paid for his the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, he caught his fish. Yeah, on. He, he said, paid. "He said, where did he get his shiners from?" Johnny D ain't seen him at the honey hole. He <laughs> he's shopping at the competitors now. Oh man, Jace. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, now nah, y'all y'all do got the best mentors. So I was at a cricket sign. You had the mentor side. What catch fish or die trying. Yeah, the our mentors or catch fish or die trying. Or die trying. I like it. That's a good um, one. It's our only guarantee. What kind, how'd they cook them? Meal or mustard? Uh, mustard. Yeah. And then the meal on the catch, on the op. of course. Yeah. yeah. They were fine. They didn't do the God. I hadn't had a good op in a long time, so I had, had about four pieces. Of it. It, was, it was fine. Oh. Yeah. I'm starving. You want some fried fish? Uh -huh. I caught a few oh, yeah. this weekend. I cut the sides off of uh, have have uh, you on? <laughs> what you catch? I caught some crappie. I caught some bass. I caught some drum. Caught oh. some catfish. Here is what I have. You clean them drums? 
No, I threw them. You back. must went to the river. I went to the to the duck hole over there that, that oh. floods, and yeah, it's got a lot of trash in it. But I I did find out something that I thought I figured I knew, but I didn't know. Everything that swims will eat a daggum chatterbait. It's unbelievable. And oh. when you have a four pound catfish, do pop that sucker. <laughs> He is like just a Take freight off. train going the other way with oh, yeah. it when he hits it. Oh, yeah, bet. catching a catfish on a moving bay. No, you just that's why you go because you you do stuff you don't you ain't ever done before every time you go. Well, and no, no, because that in Granada we was fishing for crappie. Yeah, and we was using the three inch crankbait. Uh, crankbait. Yeah, and hey, we caught twenty five <coughs> high channel uh, yeah. catfish. And they dope pop. Oh no, no, they take now. it. If, if you ain't ready, they'll take it away from you. Yeah, he mad. Oh, I thrill and all. I don't know why that catfish <laughs> got such a bad attitude. Hey, and your whole life you're taught fish on the bottom for catfish, and this, that, the other. No, they running down a daggum bait going two miles an hour, just, yeah. just oh, <laughs> and yeah. train wreck. No, no, yeah. I guess they get mad enough at it that they just that's what they do. That's but, why when you get on a, on like a, a log jam in an old river. Where it's changed current, fishing the log jam, you know, put a shiner down there, like you talking about, and we try to keep the cane pole from hitting the water. Oh, when, when they the cat, hit it, when the catfish down, you can't do it. Yeah, couldn't do it. <laughs> ain't, ain't no. Well, there's something about they come up, they come up, and then they hit a hundred miles an hour going down. Oh. and it's wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't keep them from hitting the oh, water in the water. Huh? But they are fun to catch. Oh, they fun. Roll. Yeah. Weighing about three to five pounds. You get one of the big five pound high fin channels. Yeah, I forgot just how strong their mouth is. You you can oh, check yeah. the top of my thumb for that. He 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 got me pretty good on that one. Mm. He clamped down on my thumb. I was like, I just want my twenty dollar cricket back. Yeah, I like, grabbed you, I grabbed you're a, gonna live. I just want my cricket yeah, back. <laughs> I got I grabbed a thirty pound op on the trot line. Bad call. And hey, and I didn't have a net, I didn't have my Oil field gloves, so I had to grab him barehanded. And when he, when I grabbed his lip, he clamped down, and then he started doing this. And hey, he just it sure just, makes you thankful that they don't think humans are a good oh, a good meal because you wouldn't ever go swimming. Oh, that sucker! <laughs> hey, that sucker cleaned both sides. <laughs> you tell me it hurt, and you tell me it bleed like a stuck pig, top and bottom. Whoa. Oh man, I do love it. springtime's fun. Uh, I, oh, yeah. I, it, my my only complaint, my eyes in this pollen. Oh, I'm I'm you. walking around and people are like, "Hey man, are you okay?" I'm like, yeah, "It's just it's the allergies." The hood of my black pickup truck is yellow. Is yellow. Well, uh, that's sick. Only difference is during the winter it's brown with mud. It ain't yeah. like you wash yeah. it. Oh yeah. So <laughs> you got about three layers of protection before you get to the paint on it. No. Have you ever washed that truck? <laughs> yeah, I've washed it. Okay. Every you time, personally? Every, I, every time I go to the west and have the oil change, uh, I run it through the oil. Run that water. thing through. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, run it through. And, mo- you know, and vacuum it and all that and wipe it down. Yeah. It yeah. even smells good. Get it looking like new again. <laughs> it right? even right. smells good. For three good. days, it looks pretty good till I run in the mud hole. Oh, That's kind of how you live your whole life. Well, I, Every 3,000 hey, miles, I, clean right, up, yeah. run yourself right. through a shower. Uh-oh, here goes the gong. No, he's just fixing it. Uh, just straightening it up. Yeah. Just straightened up. It failed while ago, and it got crooked. Well, let's take a break. Si, si, let's take a break. When we come back, I got an idea I want to float past you right. for, right. for a fun past Then we'll I discuss it, boys, mm. and see if we can do something with it. All right. Everything is running fine, boys. Hey, Because my Omega XL first responders uh, I need have some been them. doing their job. I have no inflammation in any joint in my body. Okay. And look, you can only find it one place on this earth. Tell us where. The pristine waters of New Zealand, baby. Yeah, boy. And hey, can I buy one bottle? Uh, Yeah, and you will get the second one free. It's just free? It's free. How do I do that? Hey, tell us all about it, Mr. Martin. (laughs) I love it. Oh, I love it, boys. Uh, Golly. Look. The older we get, the less SPMs we produce. So you need some help in that area, which is where Cy was at. Inflammation, that's the root of all pain. Omega XL can help restore your SPMs and rejuvenate joints and muscles so that you can move 
like when you were young. That's right, boy. And they are right. You it's get close. You to order the, one bottle. Hey, it's and close to the fountain of youth as you can get. <laughs> you order one, they give you another one for free just for being a good customer. All you have to do is visit OmegaXL.com slash duck. That's OmegaXL.com slash duck. Or you can call 1-800-844-4888. 1-800-844-4888. Not one, but, but it's two, and the second one's free. In in the new duck hole that Clay purchased, I'm sure everybody that's listening is probably it's, somewhat familiar with it's this. Arkansas? No, it's here. Oh, here? Yeah, it's here. 20 minutes from here. Oh. So in there, it's also got the jumping carp. The Asian carp that are such a problem. In huh? whatever the activity is, I want to be a part of it. Okay. <laughs> so, I've always wanted to do this, but I never knew a place on private land that, that would allow you to do it. it that, that, yeah. that had the jumping carp. Yeah. Well, I got us a place now. Let's say I get my boat. Because when you when you're motoring, the hum of the motor makes them jump. I get my boat. I get you a helmet. And I got you a good seat on the back of my boat. And we trim that baby up. And we go about half throttle. And make them things jump. And when they do, you take that 28 gauge. And you just well, yow I, him. Well, now, is that legal or <laughs> illegal? I was I knew where you were probably going. 100% legal. It's legal because it's private property. Oh, yeah. it's legal. Yeah. yeah, it's private property. We're not on a... Well, baby, hey. <laughs> This party, let's get this party started. I'm gonna have to get you to sign a waiver. If you shoot my motor, I'm gonna have to have you reimburse me. But Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> he's now, gonna show now, up. Now we got technical difficulties. Uh, oh, I don't there, think there's enough shells in this building to bring to uh, him. Uh, this one ain't like you see on TV with like 500 of them jumping at one time. This one's a little more controlled, but they're all. Big ones. Well, They're I, all like 20, 30 pounds. That reminds me, I'm I'm stationed in Massachusetts, okay, and I can't even remember, Fort Devens, yeah. Fort Devens in Massachusetts, I'm, I'm there, and I am, you know, bought me a fly rod, bought me some fights, you know, got a, the uh, mayfly artificial lure. Well, mayfly season is fixing to happen. Is it May? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, that evening, okay, bam. Mayfly season is open because there is millions of them hitting the water. And look, there is literally this creek I'm in, okay, about this deep, is literally slammed full of browns, rainbows, and they're jumping everywhere. Okay, and they will not hit what I've got on my fly rod. So I go to the bank, take my pocket knife out, and I find me a good limb about the size of a baseball bat, about six foot long. I cut it, okay, get all the limbs trimmed off of it. And I'm out in there, and these fish have been jumping over my fly rod. I said, well, hey, I'll just get out there with a baseball bat and knock them to the bank. <laughs> nope. You taking free swings. You tried? Huh? <laughs> but I, hey, I, for about an hour and a half till dark, I, I was doing my best. No. You can't, can't hit them. Too fast. Now, here's what I'll say. Look, for y'all that's listening that may not be into the things we're into on these Asian carp, and you're here talking about me shooting something and leaving it. Oh, it's a danger. These things are highly invasive. And they're they're dangerous. They're ruining our waterways and our fisheries. So we got to get them out of here. So that that's the purpose of this. I I don't believe in catching and killing nothing you ain't going to use, but this thing, if we don't get a hold of them. It's a nuisance. It's a nuisance, yeah. and it's going to completely ruin our fisheries and our water. But you ain't going to be able to drive a boat down none of them. If for, I could afford the arrows, I'd rather shoot them with a, with a born arrow. No. <laughs> yeah. No, that's hard. Well, I, I know, but it's fun. This thing going to be just I actually like. went with uh, Josh. Yeah. We went bow fishing. Well, that's that fun, shooting them in the water, but out of the water. Yeah. It's like a giant. Well, no, duck. no. When they come, oh, but hey, when it, it's dangerous motoring. Yeah, oh, I've, I mean, I've, I've had this them. thing slap me upside the head. I yeah. think well, they, when there's... you're running, they're pretty good. You know, got you like a twenty horse mercury. Or oh something. yeah, yeah. There's hey. guys on YouTube. They got samurai swords. They're on skis. Yeah, 
Yeah. They do it on skis yeah. with dip nets and catch them, and they, they try to do all kinds of stupid <laughs> yeah. human tricks. We're going to go a little safer. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to get a gun. We're just going to get a gun. Yeah, 28 gauge. Uh, Please don't shoot a hole in my boat. Yeah. Oh, I ain't no shoot a hole in your boat. Oh, I man. I was actually thinking maybe I'll bring some of my pistols. No. No, no, you're, you're not getting. About? You ain't getting in my boat with that. No. Oh, hey, I won't shoot. I a trust you boat. with a shotgun. You ain't getting in there with no pistol. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, pistol right. bullet keep going. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's that true. shotgun gonna hit the water and yeah. stop right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, but it'd be a lot of fun. But I'm tell. I think we could have some fun. Oh, oh no, no doubt. And we're doing the world a great service yeah. by doing yeah. so. Just, just, just being a sure. servant attitude. Make sure y'all capture that on video. Oh no. Yeah. That, that that that's a hoot just running down oh, the river goodness. okay you know because the lafouche river you run down there and they jumping everywhere oh man that's where these come from they come out of the bayou lafouche <laughs> up in there that's why that's how those got in there. No, no. and i mean you sitting there dodging yo tell me <laughs> oh yeah I I have. That's why, hey, boom. Brittany had never seen them before until yesterday and then that first one come out of the water she said what was that because she just heard the splash behind us i yeah. said turn around look behind us and then here they go. That remind me. 12 Big. Mile Bayou, Dixie, Louisiana. It's about, oh, eight miles from the house where we live. We used to go and set tow lines out on it. And at night, I don't know what it was, but it was big and it was silver. It actually would come out of the water like a whale and then, you know, splash. It wasn't spoonbill? I, I, uh, no, it wasn't oh. spoonbill. Wasn't a gar. How big was it? Big. Big. Now, they weigh, I'd figure some of them weigh 60 pounds. Now, I did see a big yellow carp, common carp yesterday come out of the water and breach. I was like, what's what's he doing? I don't Dang. know what these things, every time we went down there and set out throw lines on that stupid 12-mile bow, okay, and at night, they'd be jumping. Was it 12 miles long? Huh? I think so. Oh. I think that's why they caught 12 my bow. I sure oh, hope so. I just wondered. Well, anything <laughs> full, of, full of fish. Crappie, bass, uh, catfish. Yeah. But I don't know what that stupid thing was. It reminded me, it looked like a tarpon. But I know it ain't a tarpon. No, that's he wouldn't be there. Yeah, salt water. <laughs> but then, that's what it looked like, it was a tarpon. Dolphin. Yeah. But I mean, some of them was about 50, 60 pounds. You know, six foot long. But those, those Asian carp wouldn't have been around back then. No, shouldn't have been. No. I wouldn't think. I got, no, them, well, thing, I, I them things know. come from, you know, how they got know. here. That's, that's good catfish bait. Well, there was boys up Small there. Ones. There was boys up there in Missouri, that area, that said, we're going to grow these carp for cat food in some ponds, retained ponds, right? Yeah. Well, that's all fine until that big muddy river gets out of yeah. its banks yeah. and gets into yeah. your, your and stock runs, pond. Yeah, and runs through them stock ponds and cleans all of them fish with them. And then here they, we go. Yeah. And, and next thing you know, because there ain't no predators for them or nothing like that, and they just come in there and replace the food chain. That's yeah, like, we had a we had a pond of fish for bass, and it had goldfish. Okay, that was ten pounds. Yeah, a ten pound goldfish. Yeah, yeah. they oh they were pretty. We'd walk up at that pond and like, good grief, that. look at that, you know. Yeah, koi probably. Koi uh, pond. Just, it was just yeah. It, yeah. It was a carp, but biggins. You know, biggins. No, they they sell goldfish around here for trout line bait. Oh no no no! Thirty five cents a piece. Oh hey, it doesn't. not only that, if you know what you're doing, <laughs> oh hey, you can bait them up, and leave them out for a month, and they'll live. Goldfish tough. Oh yeah, it's weird because kids. Especially if you just hook them right behind the eye. <laughs> right behind the eye. Yeah. Both sides. Take I have it in, some... pull it too. That way they're swimming like they're supposed to, and hey. They'll live on a trout line for a month, month and a half, two months. Good, i would live. Oh, no, no, I'm telling you. I don't. It either catches the fish, this, then uh, there's the one that will, will die trying. <laughs> the goldfish? It's a goldfish, okay, because, hey, that sucker's tough now. Boy, it's a hard knock life if you're a goldfish. You either, <laughs> you either end up at the fair or on a trout line. That's it. Well, hey, they in a bowl. That's a, that's a good life. Okay. Die a lot quicker at the fair. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> There's many of them that's ended up down the turlet. Oh, <laughs> <Turlet. man. laughs> uh, We oh. have people come buy uh, goldfish for pets because we we have them just for the uh, oh cheaper bait. Pe- cheaper in Petco? We're cheaper than the That's pet why stores. right now they've got a problem. 35 with, uh, cents, baby. <laughs> with the uh, exotic snakes in Florida. What? Oh, they snakes, bought, fish, everything. Yeah, and they bought a pet, bought it as a pet. Iguanas. 
And yeah. then, hey, guess what? It got big, so they turned it loose. Yeah, I can't have now, it anymore. Now we got people that are hunting them all over Florida trying to get rid of them. Oh, yeah, they have iguana guides now down in South Florida. Oh, yeah. Iguana guides? You can purchase an iguana hunt. Oh, yeah. And pythons. And you can hunt yeah. iguanas? With air rifles. Air rifles and blow guns. That's how they kill them. Yeah. And then I would sk- feel weird shooting an iguana. They skin that big old lizard. Mm-hmm. You ain't ever been to Key West? They say it's actually good Oh, them good things eating. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. They say it's actually good eating. The only thing, I don't know, the iguanas may outnumber the chickens now in Key West. I don't know. They just got just iguanas and chickens roaming everywhere? Mm-hmm. Sounds like a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't enough rednecks. I wish I had my voice. Yeah. I sound weird today. That's fine. Ain't no, no, no uh, rednecks out there. Oh. Well, let's take another break. We'll be back right after this. I spent some time this last few days up in Springfield, Missouri. Springfield Rival. At the Bass Pro Shop. Bass Pro Shop. They had a big event up there. Barton sent me up there to work. <laughs> Press the flesh and whatnot. But... <laughs> I will say I witnessed some really good things while I was there. Okay. So at the event, uh, I guess Saturday morning, they had, uh, I forgot the name of the group, but it was a group. They sang the national anthem. And when that national anthem started, I mean, I'm looking around, there's hundreds of people in this tent looking at hunting stuff from all walks of life. Okay. When they started singing, everybody within sight of where I was stopped what they were doing, took their lids off their head, yep. put their hand over their heart, yep. and turned and faced the direction where the flag was. Every, no, one exception. Everybody. Good patriot people. In there. Yep. So that was, and that, I, that gave me chills. Yeah. So there's still hope. For America, yeah. in South Missouri and North Arkansas, in that area, a lot of patriotic people, a lot of good people. But uh, that kind of hit home with me. I thought it was a pretty cool deal. But well, it, we don't see enough of that. Oh, I know it. Okay, because the media, media, the media wouldn't cover it anyway. Hmm. Okay, because it, you know, they don't do things like that, which they should. I yeah. ain't ever served, and every time I hear that national anthem, I get chills. Yeah. Yep. Especially when you look around and there's a bunch of people doing it with you. Well, they got they got a thing on television right now about it was showing how this country was settled. Okay, when everybody was, you know, the the legendary men of help that settled this land, mm-hmm. Daniel Boone, and all of them. I what what I, I didn't know that Boonesboro was very important in our struggle for freedom. I had that on last night. I watched it, really? which was pretty. Yeah, which was pretty cool. You know, the Pony Indians put uh, Boonesboro under siege for eleven days, and the Almighty had to intervene. Okay, because the Indians had they, they had had them under siege for ten days. Well, the the Pony Chief. Finally said, "Okay, well, hey, we can't, we can't, we're not gonna win this, so let's burn it down." <clears throat> so he started shooting. They all started shooting arrows, fire arrows, on on the thing, and and they had lit it on fire, the whole compound, okay. And then hey, the Almighty had to intervene with rain and put it out, <laughs> <laughs> which was pretty cool. There yeah. you go. That's what people don't realize. Hey. This land was settled with men and women who toted Bibles and lived the life, believing in Jesus was the Son of God. Okay? That's one reason they crossed that ocean, religious freedom. Yeah, so it was, it was cool to watch it. But I see, I didn't know. Boonesboro was very important in, in, the, in the war against the British. Hmm. Where is Boonesboro? Kentucky. Oh, okay. I figured it was. There's a lot of boroughs up there through Kentucky yeah. and Tennessee and yep. all that area. A lot of boroughs. Yeah. But, uh, we yeah. got a lot of veals down here. <laughs> yeah, a lot of veals. Yeah. I, I, it's always funny. You go to them states and you're like, a lot of boroughs, a lot of veals, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of cities. We got right. Iberville. We got 
Balkanville. Balkanville. <laughs> we got Ray Farmerville. Rayville. Farmerville. Farmerville. I'm telling you, there's a bunch of them around here. Jonesville. I've like never noticed how Jones many villes we have. A lot of villes. See, that's what I'm talking about. A lot of villes in this, in this part of the world. Bunch of them. Which I guess is why when you go to them little towns, it says the village of blank. I don't know. I guess they just drop village on some of them and just put veal. Just Could the you veal imagine rolling back. up through here and seeing the village of Balkum? I don't even know what Balkum is. <laughs> but we got Balkum Veal. Balkum Veal, baby. The 71292. There's a lot of. Just north of Sai's house. <laughs> Sign the suburbs. I wonder how many Shady Groves are in Louisiana. <laughs> Shady Grove. It, it seems like I'll drive 50 miles and I'll run through Shady Grove. <laughs> yeah. Twice. You ever notice that? Yeah. There's there's a few of them. Run out of names, so they just start over, boys. Well, I guess everybody yeah. wanted to build their house in a Shady Grove. Hey. Keep it cool. That's it. You know? It's a good place to live. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, ba- so I'd like to have a deer stand in a Shady Grove. That's it. Hey. People are weird. Yeah. <laughs> very much creatures of habit, because it's the same everywhere you go. It don't matter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? I wish Cy would have settled a town. Cyville. Cyville. He would have got to name it. If you would have named a town. I, I have no idea what I would have named it. It would have taken some time. Hey. Beaver Town. No. He's in deep thought. <laughs> Tea Village. <laughs> Tevin. Cy City. Sci City, baby. Sci City. Uh, uh, Sci City. Yeah, I, I was uh, talking to some guys while I was up in Missouri and just telling stories and whatnot. And, and, and the one story that was, I don't know if we've told it on here. I don't think we have. That was the most unbelievable story that they've ever heard. And, and, and the things that have happened to Phil in his lifetime are Incredible. And now this to me is top two of the most incredible things ever to happen to Phil Roberts in his lifetime. It, it, people don't know. Your mother, Granny, your Phil, Phil's mother, went on the price is right. Didn't didn't Harold take her there for a birthday yeah. or something? Harold and Mary. Harold married yeah. uh, Phil's older brother. Phil Sy's older brother took her, took her to California because she loved the prices. How old was she at this time? 84. 84 years old. Sharp as a tack. And, and didn't win one showcase. Yeah. She won both of them. Went to the prices right, got called up, <laughs> and she had told, the way the story goes, she had told all y'all that if she ever got up there, if Bob Barker she, called her name, she would win it. She would win both showcases. Yeah. Yeah. She They played that game. The where they had the uh, the grocery items, mm-hmm. she got every one of them not just close to the penny. Oh no, no, her and dad. Okay, she's been watching that show. No, no, to growing up, the penny. I I remember just like it was yesterday. Okay, yeah, daddy and mama would argue about who won. They'd watch it, and every night, you know, because at the end of it, it's always two people, and they, you know. Okay, here's your showcase. You can pass or you can bid on it. <laughs> you know, and they'd sit there and tell me, well, you want this or do you want me to pass it to you? You know, I'm talking, hey, no, you bid on it. I don't want it. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, hey, they watched it re- religiously every time it was on. Oh, I, I, I yeah. know that feeling because when I was growing up, I didn't have to stay no babysitter or child care. I stayed with my grandparents because they both retired. Everybody knew from the hours of 10 to 2, you didn't touch that TV because at 10 o'clock, you had prices right. Yeah. At 11 o'clock, Mamma had to watch a young and a wrestling. Yep. Stories. 12 o'clock, news. You had to watch what, because, you know, three hours ago, something else done happened. Yeah. I that never understood it. Then 1230 was like bold and beautiful. It's 30 minutes. Oh, story. More stories. And then you had as the world turned. Yep. 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 And she didn't like nothing at two o'clock back. So two o'clock she's back out in the garden. <laughs> Did she call them her stories? Oh yeah. Her story. Oh, yeah. Mamma Stone. Yeah. Same way. Same through an hour. Got to watch my stories. And she'd watch all that while she was cooking Papa and me lunch because she cooked a hot lunch. Every day, just yep. like Phil and Kay did oh, no. when we worked down oh, there. Yeah. Mama, Papa always had Mama a Mama cooked a, a pot of pinto beans and cornbread. She had one every day. And hers, the staple at hers, every there day. was always a pot of purple whole peas. Yep. Or. Summertime. Or yep. 
or yep. butter beans, what we called them. But, you know, yeah, yep. lima beans, whatever you want to call them. But we called them butter beans because she grew them in the garden. But every time, <laughs> every day, you could count on that. And some version of cornbread, whether it be skillet cornbread or hot water cornbread, there was always a yep. version. Mama was by cornbread. herself. Yep. We always asked her, what in the world are you cooking up a big six-quart bar of pinto <laughs> beans for mm-hmm. and two two Pans of cornbread. Never know somebody gonna oh, stop hey, by. Never know um, somebody might stop uh, by. Yeah, well, those are some good memories, aren't they? I guarantee. And hey, not a day ever went by that someone, somewhere in that town, or either just a, 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 a hobo. Yeah. Knock on that door. Yep. What you got to eat? Yeah. I'm serious. <laughs> Always as a kid, I remember. I, I just I got chill bumps on it because hey, it, it, that was important to me. Okay. Yeah. I was sitting there waiting on that clock to get to two because I knew at two o'clock I could then con her in to go fishing at the pond across there the street. <laughs> you didn't have to ask her hard because she go with you now. But she was going to uh, tote that five-gallon bucket because whatever you caught, we come back knock the sides off of. It didn't matter. You go. It didn't matter what ain't, it was. You were you talking about that. Ain't Irene, it's, I, her kids was talking about that. Talking about, oh, I miss Ben Mama because, hey, she always loads us up in that old pickup, and we'd go to Black Bow. Yeah. Catch yeah. us mess them big old cheeky pins. Yeah, but going back to the Price is Right, so so Granny gets on there, and and not only wins one showcase, she wins both showcases, two new cars. So <laughs> it, it, I saw the video. I, it's got to be uh, on, on the Internet somewhere. Merritt Robertson uh, wins the, both showcases, Price is Right. Now, this is Phil and Si's mama. You can't make you can't make that up. That's unreal. It's unreal. And look, she was such so good with them numbers. You know what else is weird? My wife, every contact in her phone, she knows the number. <laughs> I ain't got that. Oh no no I no! I used no. to have it. That. That's why I was saying it, the the amazing thing was she had about I think seven items. Okay, that they asked her. All right, Mary, what's yeah. the price of this? She didn't get close. It was like, hey, three ninety nine, Bob. You know, they'd flip the thing, three ninety nine. Exactly. exactly. All of them. Well, All what about this macaroni, yo, know, <laughs> box, yo, know, whatever? Well, that's uh, that's four four seventy five. Unbelievable. Bob. Let's take a break and we'll keep watching. Well, look, that was awesome. We're back. I'm still watching this. The day has flown by. Hey, well, sit, hey sit this is your this is your part. Oh yeah, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm let's, awake now. We already did in that mailbag. So. Let's hey, talk about hey, look at live. Jesus. Hey, here we go. Did y'all see that the Undertaker uh Christian emailed in from Nashville? Did you see the Undertaker this weekend? No. He got in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, did you I, see it, I saw it. Huh. Did I you see what it. he said? No, no. About Jesus? No, no, I didn't see that. Oh, so he gets up there and I appreciate Christian reminding me of this is why I'm reading this email. Because uh, we all watch, you like wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling's awesome. So he gets up there, and in his introduction, he thanks his wife for helping. Him, and I, the whole crowd's like kind of listening. He's like, for helping me restore my relationship with Jesus Christ. And yeah. the crowd goes wild. So, like, he is so awesome to see him. You know, WWE, there's not a lot of preaching and gospel going on there. Yeah. But The Undertaker brought it. Well, and especially with a man like a name Undertaker, who was known for burying people. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily associate him with Jesus. But I'll in, say this, so as a kid, low-key, I was scared to death of Undertaker. <laughs> like, that boy, he rolled them eyes back oh, in the no, back no, of his yeah. head. Oh, yeah. Uh-uh. No, sir. Like, don't yeah. you come around me, son. But you know what's wild now with the way TV works now? You can go back and watch. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Nope. That man no, just got up on me to got death. up up sta- hey and got on stage and kind of got emotional talking about Jesus. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, he's a oh, hunter too. He he's a, is. and he is a man's man. Likes he, to hunt and fish. Yeah, he'd be hard to hide though in the Yo, woods. Our friends over at Nine Line, they they they're buddies with him. They, and they don't they can't say enough good things about him. Yeah. Oh, speaking of that. Speaking of what? Uh oh. Uh, got you a new shirt? Yeah. Oh. Now look at the back of that's the M fourteen oh, rifle. M fourteen is what I had in Vietnam, boy. That's one of the military's finest rifles. That's what it says here on this from nine lines. Hey, uh, Johnny D, my seven-year-old, you know her. Mm-hmm. She, <laughs> she's a mess. She's wild. So, Those blonde tornadoes. She, her favorite thing to do now, when she gets home, 
she turns on the Royal Rumble. <laughs> and you know who her favorite wrestler is? The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> the American Dream, baby. She oh. loves her some Dusty Rhodes. Oh Lord! And, you know, oh. yeah, I, I told I told my wife. I said, you know, this is the greatest thing that could ever happen. My daughter's being influenced by Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> she's gonna whoop Carter one day in that neighborhood. <laughs> Carter's just gonna be walking around, and she's gonna pow. But you know. It, it it it's back in them days. That was good wholesome entertainment. You know they got a little risque. You know, uh, for a little while, but but this back now to where it's it's actually pretty fun to watch. But that's her favorite thing to do now is is turn on the Royal Rumble, <laughs> and her favorite one is the nineteen ninety two, when Ric Flair come in at number three Woo! and won the whole thing. Woo! That is amazing uh, that she's no, watching funny, 1992 uh, wrestling videos. The funniest thing, I go over there to eat. They invited me over for supper, steak dinner. I come in, I sit down in the chair, and I'm sitting there, and the blonde tornado comes running in the room, and she gets right in front of me and looks at me and tells me, oh, you want to wrestle? I said, no, Sage, I don't want to wrestle. No, ma'am. Because <laughs> you'll hurt me. No, ma'am. You ain't hurting me. Oh, because she come in and she was bowled up talking about, Uncle Sai, you want to wrestle? No, I don't want to wrestle. Oh, that's yeah. funny stuff. But I just thought that was cool that that to is. see that's a man's awesome. man of a, like, uh, to just get, and he got a little emotional. And, and we talked about weaknesses and being strong. And uh, just to see him know, like, at, after every, I mean, the pinnacle of success in what he did, Hall of yeah. Fame, everybody immediately knows who The Undertaker is. And he said, Thank you to my wife for restoring my relationship with Jesus. Oh, That's yeah. amazing. That sounds kind of familiar. Yeah. Sound like a, <laughs> yeah. Sound like a Phil and Kay kind of man. <laughs> Behind every good man, there's a good woman. Sound yeah. kind of like a Phil and Kay. Oh, my Here Lord. Here goes the lemon juice. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. That's that a little even, bit heavy, boys. That ain't even tea anymore. That's lemonade. <laughs> oh, and a shot of it. Oh man, oh. what else you got, Johnny D? Oh, the pods. I'm just now. I'm just thinking about. Oh, what you just did. Oh goodness. All right. Um. And here's an interesting one. I'm gonna leave the name out just in case any of her lazy coworkers listen. Uh oh. Um. <laughs> ah, we'll call her Sharon from Alabama. Um. She Roll loves her. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Oh, oh, did I say that on accident? I did. <laughs> she loves her job, but for the past. Year two, her coworkers uh, been lacking. They don't uh, really put in the effort that she's putting in, and she feels like she's always the only one putting in most of the work, and she's just carrying their load. Um, her boss, their boss, has spoke to them, but nothing's changing, and I'm getting irri irritated. I would hate to start being like them, and just riding the coattails of somebody else. But I'm tired of doing everything. What should I do? First of all, let me say, around the bowl, down the hole, roll, tide, roll. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where we were going with that. That, that ought to carry you through, baby. Uh, <laughs> so just keep keep working. Hey, keep on doing what you're doing. You, you can't you can't stoop to that to their level, and you will be rewarded. Yeah, for for hard work. Hard work always pays off, no doubt about it. And you never know who else is why. I don't, it doesn't say what kind of job she's in, but uh, I we recently hired a kid who came in asking for a job. He was in the same spot. He was just he was like, man, I'm sick of this place, and I feel like I'm the only one working. And I knew who he was because boy used to make a real good pizza back in the day. <laughs> and so <laughs> I've I've seen him working hard, and I was like, when he came in, it was like, you want, I kind of want a job. I was like, yep. What are they paying you there? Because I'll get it higher. Yeah. Because I've seen you work. So keep doing what you're doing for sure. And the this day and age, I heard a guy the other day said, it's hard to even find bad help these days. So if yeah. you start looking, you might be surprised at what you can find pretty quick. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, same thing. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. Just because don't stoop to their level. Like, is what it is. And as an important employer and as an overseer of a company we we know who's working hard and who ain't mm. we we know you know it's just part of it and and those that do get rewarded 
it may take longer than you desire to get to reap said reward. Yeah. But you will be rewarded and just keep doing your thing. But, mm -hmm. you know, it, that's kind of like what the, I mean, it kind of goes back to that deal. And I guess it's Romans. What should I do now? Keep on sinning just because of grace and mercy. By no oh, means. By no means. <laughs> just keep working hard. I mean, just don't. I heard that verse once or twice this week. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the same old deal. Not saying that hard work and laziness and all that is a sin by any means, but I'm just trying to draw the correlation between, well, what should I do? Just do what they're doing or should I keep doing my thing? Keep Persistence doing your thing. pays off. And, and, you know, you never know when it pay off. Everybody, you know, the overnight duck. Commander success, what forty years? Huh. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. And and Phil worked really hard for a really long time, and he loved it. Yeah. And then, you well, know, yeah. two thousand thirteen rolled around, and huh. the reward Damn. was, I'm assuming, pretty good. So. And now we at fifty. Now we at fifty. Fifty, 50. years. Is this fit? Oh, it's yep. fifty. That's all. <clears throat> Happy we'll, anniversary, guys. We'll, we'll be coming up with some fiftieth anniversary yep. duck calls I here like pretty that. soon. Fifty. We're going to try to make them out of Cypress. Yeah, let's what do you think about that? With them. I like yeah. that. Sell Johnny D a set. Ooh. Uh, since he don't we'll work here no more. We'll give y'all a deal. No employee discount no more, son. <laughs> I just show up on time. You may get that. See, look. Hey, Sharon from Alabama. Look, we got two slackers, too. They was 30 minutes late this morning. Excuse me, sir. I don't work here anymore. Uh, that was not my <laughs> fault. Uh, See, I bet your coworkers say that, too, don't they, no, Sharon? Hey. <laughs> Somebody should have told Rob me. Robertson Rule. Assess play. Assess play. Oh, well, send us out of here, Jack. I got us a little something, and I've been quiet today because, man, what an incredible weekend I spent with a hundred dudes. Uh, throw your cell phones away. Don't throw them away, but get rid of them. Take your watches away and just focus on Jesus. If your church, wherever you're at in America, if they're like, hey, we're just going to go and focus on Jesus, do it. You'll be amazed at what happens. Uh, and this was kind of our verse for the weekend, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Woo! I'm getting fired up again. Uh, you know, we're all, we all have weaknesses, Um and you got to share them with your brothers, and you got to be able to say, I need help when you need help. And when you do that kind of thing, I promise you, you will see the power of Jesus come down in a mighty way. Um, it was an incredible weekend. Si, si only saw Sunday morning. He fired up about it. That was it. Um, yep. So, hey, look, put your phone down, focus on God, boast in the Lord, do those things this week. We're out. Amen. See y'all next time right here. Si, ring that bell. That's it, baby.